Russia is now in control of much of Severodonetsk, the epicenter of the battle for Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. Russian forces are now in control of most of Severodonetsk, the epicenter of the bloody battle for Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. Street fighting continued to rage on Saturday in the eastern city, where Russian soldiers and Ukrainian troops are still locked in battle. The situation remains difficult. Fighting continues, but unfortunately most of the city is under Russian control. Some positional battles are taking place in the streets, said Sergei Haidai, the governor of Luhansk region, which makes up Donbass along with the neighboring Donetsk region. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that the fight for the strategic city may dictate the outcome of the war in the east of the country. Severodonetsk remains the epicenter of the confrontation in Donbass, Zelensky said during his nightly address on Wednesday. This is a very fierce battle, very difficult, probably one of the most difficult throughout this war, he added. In many ways, the fate of our Donbass is being decided there. Severodonetsk lies in the heart of Donbass, a sprawling industrial region in eastern Ukraine that has seen intermittent fighting since 2014, when Russian-backed separatists seized control of two territories there, the self-declared Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic. Haidai said on Saturday that Ukraine were still in control of the Azot chemical plant in Severodonetsk, where 800 people are reportedly sheltering, after a Russian-backed official claimed that Ukrainian fighters were also trapped there. The story about the blockade of the Azot plant is a complete lie spread by Russian propagandists, Haidai said on the Telegram messaging app. Rodion Miroshnik, a Russian-backed leader of the self-proclaimed Luhansk People's Republic, claimed on Saturday that up to 400 Ukrainian fighters were taking refuge in the factory complex, hiding alongside civilians in bomb shelters, and that negotiations for their surrender and the safe evacuation of civilians were ongoing. The combatants are trying to make demands, namely to allow them to leave the territory of the chemical plant together with the hostages and to provide a corridor to go to Lyschansk. Such demands are unacceptable and will not be taken into consideration, Miroshnik said. <laughs> Meanwhile, as Russian forces advance their control of key regions in Ukraine, and the number of civilian casualties rise. Zelensky has remained firm in his stance that Ukraine will overcome Russia's invasion. Speaking in a special virtue address to the Shangri-La Dialogue, Asia's premier defense conference, Zelensky said Ukraine will definitely prevail in its war against Russia. This is the confrontation between the possible, which we and many people in the world need, and the impossible, for which Russia is so desperately fighting for, Zelensky said. He added, Russia's regarded his country as its colony and was doing its utmost to make it impossible for Ukraine to exist freely and independently. Zelensky warned that failure to do so would result in an acute and severe food crisis and famine in many Asian and African countries. He added that the Black Sea, through which Ukraine exported most of its foodstuff before Russia's invasion, has become the most dangerous waterway in the world. Since the war began, Russia has been blocking Ukraine from exporting goods from its ports, fueling fears of a global food crisis. Before the war, wheat supplies from Russia and Ukraine accounted for almost 30% of global trade, and Ukraine was the world's fourth largest exporter of corn and the fifth largest exporter of wheat, according to the U.S. State Department. The United Nations World Food Program, which helps combat global food insecurity, buys about half of its wheat from Ukraine each year and has warned of dire consequences if Ukrainian ports are not opened up.